play. of my life I don't know but it's um, for sure very very important um, I know as I say it's it helps a lot the last the last competition that is a team competition and because you get a lot of energy from your teammates from the whole team and then the crowd is different and I really enjoyed playing today it was uh, was a great match I started off really well and obviously in the second set he raised his level and the third set, I, I, I just tried to, to hold my service games and, and, and waiting for a, for a good opportunity, which arrived on a 5 all and I took it. And obviously it was a very crucial uh, match um, for, for the whole team. And at the end of the match, I was really happy for, for the team to be at least able to, to play a deciding doubles. And you know we played really good and I think it was a really positive positive day today. Uh, Yannick, uh, I just want to ask you about the three match points that you saved at 4-5 in the third set in the singles. Can you just talk us through what was going through your head? How did you remain calm in those moments and what were you trying to do in, in each of those points? I know that it was a really uh, important, obviously, um, important game. Um, we, we changed not for so long for new balls, so I knew if I'm gonna serve well that maybe I have some free points. But I had to stay in the present moment. It was love 40, and he missed a quite easy backhand, which which gave me a little, a little bit of confidence and belief. And then after I served twice, really good, and um, and nothing. You know, after this kind of games, you. you your your energy level and then mental <coughs> level it's it's racing and I think this helped me today. Yeah, over here. I'm not sure anyone else can maybe say they've beaten Novak Djokovic twice in in one afternoon. What does that achievement mean to you? Yeah, it means a lot. Obviously, before the match, we we were talking um, that it was a really important test today. You know, trying to understand what what to expect before the match and. And then I think we we made a good uh, good tactical um, moment also before the match and, and obviously playing it is a little bit different but I think I have to be really proud about how I handled the situation um, and as I said it's, I'm just very happy for all of us for the team and, and tomorrow we have a great opportunity. Um, we know this, but in the other way, we, we will try to stay as, as relaxed as possible. You know, keeping the smile in, in in our in our head, which is important also, and then also to be happy to be here. No, it's uh, not so many. Um, for me, it's it's the first time that we can play a final in in, in, in Davis Cup, which is it means a lot for us. One last question, please. Um, Yannick, uh, just looking forward to the final and to the other guys, please, as well. Apparently, uh, the Australian team that you're facing in the final, you'll be playing De Manor, presumably, in the second match. And um, you've got this extraordinary hold over him. Uh, I think he's only going to one set off you. How much of an advantage do you think that is for you? And what confidence does that give you? Well, we don't know who is going to play. Yeah, we, uh, we, we have to decide, we have to, we have to, you know, I have a lot of hours in my leg, uh, this I know. Um, if I play against him, it's, it's going to be different, you know, finals, as I said, it's always different, but let's see, it's, uh, it's his decision, um, he's, he's, he's the captain of the team and so he can, he can answer you that. <laughs> Thanks, Yannick. Mm, no, obviously, it's our uh, 
point of power. He, 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 Yanni gives us a lot of energy, gives us a lot of confidence uh, in ourselves, obviously. He's a great player, but he's not only a great player, so he's a great person. That's what I like. So, yeah, he, he's probably in the first position to play tomorrow. Strong, different. Uh, this, uh, yeah, different from uh, Serbians. Maybe more, uh, maybe closer than um, than uh, Netherlands as singles and doubles. But still, we have to take care of us, thinking about tomorrow, enjoying today, but focus for tomorrow, so I had, uh, had to tomorrow. We switch into Italian, but for the Monday Italian. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell so you don't miss out on all things tennis. of my life, I don't know, but it's um, for sure very, very important. Um, you know, as I say, it's, it helps a lot the last, the last competition that is a team competition and because you get a lot of energy from your teammates, from the whole team and then the crowd is different and I really enjoyed playing today. It was, uh, was a great match. I started off really well and obviously in the second set he raised his level and the third set, I, I, I just tried to, to hold my service games and, and, and waiting for a, for a good opportunity which arrived on a 5 all and I took it and obviously it was a very crucial uh, match um, for, for the whole team and at the end of the match I was really happy for, for the team to be at least able to, to play a deciding doubles and you know, we played really good and I think it was a really positive, positive day today. Yannick, uh, I just want to ask you about the three match points that you saved at 4-5 in the third set in the singles. Can you just talk us through what was going through your head? How did you remain calm in those moments and what were you trying to do in each of those points? I know that it was a really uh, important, obviously, um, important game. Um, we, we changed not for so long for new balls. So I knew if I'm going to serve well that maybe I have some free points. But I had to stay in the present moment. It was love 40 and he missed a quite easy backhand which, which gave me a little, little bit of confidence and belief. And then after I served twice really good. And, um, and nothing, you know, after this kind of games, you, your, your energy level and then mental <coughs> level, it's, it's racing. And I think this helped me today. Yannick, over here. I'm not sure anyone else can maybe say they've beaten Novak Djokovic twice in, in one afternoon. What does that achievement mean to you? Yeah, it means a lot. Obviously, before the match, we, we were talking um, that it was a really important test today, you know, trying to understand what, what to expect before the match. And then, then I think we, we made a good, uh, good tactical. Um, moment also before the match and, and obviously playing it is a little bit different but I think I have to be really proud about how I handle the situation um, and as I said it's, I'm just very happy for all of us for the team and, and tomorrow we have a great opportunity 
Um, we know this, but in the other way, we, we will try to stay as, as relaxed as possible, you know, keeping the smile in, 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 our, in our head, which is important also, and then also to be happy to be here, no? It's uh, not so many... Um, for me, it's, it's the first time that we can play a final in, 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 in Davis Cup, which is, it, it means a lot for us. One last question in English. Um, Yannick, uh, just looking forward to the final, and to the other guys, please, as well. Apparently, uh, the Australian team that you're facing in the final, you'll be playing De Manor, presumably, in the second match, and um, you've got an extraordinary hold over him. Uh, I think he's only going to one set off you. How much of an advantage do you think that is for you, and what confidence does that give you? Well, we don't know who is gonna play. Senti faccio giocare. Yeah, yeah. We, uh, we we have to decide. We have to. We have to. You know, I have a lot of hours in my leg. Uh, this I know. Um, if I play against him, it's it's gonna be different. You know, finals, as I said, it's always different. But let's see. It's, uh, it's his decision. Um, he is he's, he's the captain of the team, and so he can he can answer you that. <laughs> Thanks, Yannick. <laughs> no, obviously, it's our uh, point of power. He, 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 Yannick gives us a lot of energy, gives us a lot of confidence uh, in ourselves, obviously. He's a great player, but he's not only a great player, so he's a great person. That's what I like. So, yeah, <laughs> he's probably in the first position to play tomorrow. Strong, different. Uh, this, uh, yeah, different from uh, Serbians. Maybe more, uh, maybe closer than um, than uh, Netherlands as singles and doubles. But still, we have to take care of us. Thinking about tomorrow, enjoying today, but focus for tomorrow. So I had uh, had to tomorrow. We switch into Italian for the Monday. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell so you don't miss out on all things tennis. of my life I don't know but it's um, for sure very very important um, you know as I say it's it helps a lot the last the last competition that is a team competition and because you get a lot of energy from your teammates from the whole team and then the crowd is different and I really enjoyed playing today it was uh, was a great match I started off really well and obviously in the second set he raised his level and the third set, I, I, I just try to, to hold my service games and, and, and waiting for a, for a good opportunity, which arrived on a 5 hole and I took it. And obviously it was a very crucial uh, match um, for, for the whole team. And at the end of the match, I was really happy for, for the team to be at least able to...
play. Hey, Shrewy, how are you? Hi, John, I'm good. How are you? Not too bad for those of you. You just really tuned. put me through that press conference three times. It was a reminder <laughs> that Djokovic blew three match points three times. Anyway, oh, there you go. Um, maybe yeah. Yeah, they're, they're underway. I was just uh, uh, following the first couple of points. I mean, some really good exchanges so far. Uh, what are your thoughts? Is what are your thoughts on this? Can Lahetska do some damage? Definitely. Uh, interesting thing is that uh, they only played once before, and that was uh, at a challenger in Ostrava four five years ago, 2019. And that was on clay. Yannick won pretty straightforward, uh, in pretty straightforward fashion with 6-4, 6-2. But I don't think we can take anything from that match, to be honest. It was so long ago and, you know, both players are completely different now, um, especially Sinner and, uh, you know, being a Grand Slam champion and being on a 17-18 match win streak the moment but at the same time the Hechka is seemingly playing uh, the tennis of his life you know beating uh, Rublev and Tsitsipas back to back without getting broken or without dropping a set I think he's shown a really high enough level to convince me that this uh, could be a fun contest if you were coaching someone and let's say if you were coaching let's say you're coaching someone outside the top 100 let's go for uh, yeah, just a random player. What would you say you could possibly do to hurt Sinner right now? Right now, the, yeah, it's a much difficult question to answer now than maybe, um, you know, a few months ago. What, what, what I mean, I would have said is, you know, uh, go toe to toe with him from the baseline, have mm -hmm. as many exchanges as possible, and you know, try to wear him down from the uh, from back of the court, but. Um, I mean, as we've seen, he's managed to outlast some of the best players in the world um, yeah. over the past couple of months or so. So that's not a question anymore. Before that, he never, I mean, he never had a, a apparent weakness to that a player could exploit. It was just his physicality and maybe uh, in some ways mental frailness. He was losing too many five setters. But now that has changed. I mean, it's taken a, a turn upside down over the last couple of months. So at the moment, um, I would, you know, uh, advise that player uh, to not hold back, uh, not uh, be nervy. And in terms of tactics, uh, what, what would I say? Um, yeah, like mix things up with the serve. Uh, you know, try to, uh, uh, you know, you should be good enough defensively because Sinner... Uh, once he gets on the front foot, you know, there's very few players who can keep up with him and sort of defend from the back of the court. Uh, so, you know, uh, defend well from the back of the court and try to change directions every now and then and, you know, try to wrong foot him. Um, and those are, I think, things that Lehechka can do. I mean, he's been serving extremely well over the past few um, matches or so. And yeah. He, I mean, I saw a couple of points in the uh, opening game. I mean, Sinner was um, had the upper hand in a couple of rallies, but uh, Lehechka was able to turn defense into attack and, you know, was able to win those uh, couple of points. So that is something that's pretty crucial. And also, uh, I would say, yeah, you know, come to the net off and try to, you know, make him pass you. And not just come to the net and stay there or, uh, you know, uh, you, it, it, execution matters as well, um, you know. So, you feel, make him feel like he's rushed. Make him feel like he has to do something different. Uh, don't let him play within his comfort zone. Um, yeah, those are things I would say. Uh, just... A lot has been said about Lahetska's serve, and and that's sort of something that's on fire at the moment. I mean, if he can just comfortably hold uh, more often than not, that will put him in a in a position where he can do some damage. Um, and then, you know, just go for it. I mean, what I would do with a random 150 player, and by the way, there's a certain Brin British player who I'm thinking of uh, whose surname rhymes with Toadie. And I, I would, <laughs> I'd just say, just go for it on every point. I mean, what, this is what I would do, because I've often thought about this. I would love to play a 10-point tiebreak with a bunch of professionals on tour, okay? Uh, men and women to see if I could win a, a point because you'd never, you'd never be able to say to Yili Lehetska, uh, can I borrow you for three hours so we can play a three, three or five set hour or whatever and, um, and see if I can win a point. No, but what you could do is you could just get, you could just get 20 players across the tour over the course of two years to do a, 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 a super tie break. 
and there'll be one player and they will be the most embarrassed player on the tour that loses a point to me. Right, that's true. I mean, we saw that. I'm so unfortunate. Who I'm, I'm, you, you, I, there's no point, even against Jaime Muna or Kazakina uh, or Wozniacki, there's no point in just playing their game. You just got to go for it. In fact, exactly. those are the guys I think I might get a point against. Mm -hmm. That's true. And... Uh... Yeah, like you said, you don't want to. You want, you don't want these players to play within their comfort zone. And if you play the way you know Seder wants you to play, and it's it's done. Uh, so yeah, that's. I think I think the hedge guy is a player who can disrupt. He can. Uh, he's shown to be fearless. Shown himself to be fearless. Um, I I mean, there are matches he's played against some of the best players. I can think of Novak earlier this year. I mean, what was that the United Cup? Strange match because Novak was running away with it, but you know, yeah, the he, I think he got a break. Did he go break down Lahetsko and then get the break back? Yeah, got the break back and then he got a chance to serve for the set and he couldn't, but he um, sealed the set in the tiebreaker. Obviously, he got breadsticked again, I think, in the decider, but nonetheless. And yeah, last year, I think he beats Verev, although I, I, mean, I won't look too much into that with because Verev that was his first tournament uh, since coming back from his surgery. Um, and then who else? Yeah, of course, he beat Rublev in Doha last year. He beat Rublev when Tsitsipas here. And yeah, I mean, people would be quick to say, I mean, beating Tsitsipas at the moment doesn't mean much. I don't know, but... <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, 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 you, I, I, I did see you, Damien, and Manj have that sort of uh, three-way conversation about, uh, you know, where next for Tsitsipas? What, what's the yeah. future like for him? But I mean, I, I to be fair, he was playing well. Uh, he played well against Tiafo. I, I thought Tiafo would beat him because he's a again tough matchup historically for Steph. But he won that very comfortably. Uh, the match before that would be played Luca Pui. I mean, Pui even you just never know. Like when he clicks, it's you know he can beat any, almost anybody. Uh, we saw that at the Australian Open in 2019, of course, uh, and. Even in 2016, those back-to-back -back quarterfinals at Slams, one of them beating Rafa at the U.S. Open. Uh, so yeah, and he looked confident. I mean, he had, I think he'd beaten Daniel Altmaier also in the first round, so that was a pretty good win. Uh, so yeah, I think Steph stepped it up and he played well. And again, Pui would be a kind of player Steph may struggle against, uh, so but now. We've but, had, but now it, it's uh, you know watching more and more clips. I mean, obviously, tennis TV shares some of the you know, best points or even match points from these matches. You can just see it, the tactics so clear for players against Steph. We but we've had two uh, we've had two games to thirty so far, um, mm -hmm. both following similar patterns. Lehetsko actually had a chance there at forty thirty, I thought, to force a deuce. Mm -hmm. but went long with the forehand when maybe he might regret it, especially if Sinner continues returning of, to his serve uh, like he did just there on that love all point. Mm, yeah, the 15-30 point just got, I mean, 15 all point, I should say, just, just got over. And then, yeah, Lehechka had the right tactic, but again, just missed the, uh, missed the volley at the net. Um, so, yeah, so and he can't afford to get into too many 1530s and 1540s. No. Oh, Sinner had a chance there. So it was a serve from the hedge car, and then there was a return floating over the net from Sinner. The hedge car didn't do too much with the plus one forehand, uh, but he was at the net. I mean, he fed the forehand right to Sinner's back, and he had a gap, but he tried to go for a bit too much, and you know, he went wide. So it's 30 all. Yeah, that was a chance. Um, go on, go on. Bad miss. Um, again, serve from the hedge gun and Sinner returns the forehand cross court and there's a huge shank. So it's break point for Sinner. Yeah. I'm just going to get a glass of water. I'll be back in 30 seconds. All right. So first break point of the match. Let's see. Serve out wide and the return goes long. Nothing much Sinner can do about that. Hedge gun saves the first break point. Reduce. Bit of a shaky start, I would say, for both players. But if they reach their respective optimal levels, this should be a fun match. Both really heavy strikers of the ball. Um, both can serve well. Um, oh, 
sitter of a forehand miss from the hedge. I mean, that was a good serve down the tee. Again, Sinner just got it over the net. He should have put that forehand away and he dumps it into the net. Two or three okay. misses like that. Sounds like Sin had a point. Sin had a chance there, Shuhui. Yeah, on the break point, but he has another break point now. Yeah. Um, okay, that was a good ominous, point. Ominous, ominous start though. I would say, um, you know, the first two service games, okay, didn't reach juice, but the first person to be putting pressure on their opponent's serve is the favourite. Mm-hmm. That's true. Oh, Lahetska, that that serve plus one. Yeah, I think two or three misses like that. Okay, you're a point behind me, so I guess. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Lehetska's, that's two points now, and I know we're talking about just two points, but fine margins. He keeps that forehand in on the previous service game. That's a nice surf plus one, especially especially his, his mind would have been full of doubt, bearing in yep. mind these these two points I'm highlighting. First of all, in the previous game, we had a forehand quite similar that he didn't mm -hmm. put away, he put it long. But even more so, that one just now when, when he had a serve plus one that he put into the net. But Sinner has a third break point. Yeah, another bad miss there from the Hedgeka. Yeah, I think there was a third or fourth forehand error already from him. And, and I mean, the I serve is the... working. The serve is doing what it should, which is, is you know, getting some fairly cheapish points. Uh, I wouldn't oh. say that last one was too cheap, but um, because it was a good depth on the return there from Yannick. But still, Lehetska will be very disappointed with that un unforced stare into the net. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. It's just wonder what the conditions are like. I mean, Sinner's wearing those sleeves. Looks yeah, I think like it's, I think it is windier. I'll yeah, tell you why. Right. It was it was a little windy a couple of days ago, and Vanch, who said he's mm -hmm. going today, and now actually just showing uh, some of the breeze. I don't think it's crazy windy. We're not talking like French Open semi final of of twenty nineteen <laughs> or even Indian yeah. Wells twenty twenty two, but um, but yeah, and uh, Vanch was saying that he was going today, and he was anticipating stronger winds today than a couple of days mm -hmm. ago. Oh, interesting how that would uh, play out for the other semifinals. Um, By the way, the net is not a good friend of Lehetska's, uh, as no. Sinner does, Sina does break. Yeah, I mean, disappointing start, you know, because he had the right tactics. The serve worked, like you said. I mean, he got the placements just right. It's the execution after, like he's just missing too much. Or... You know, that, like on that break point. Should have done better with that. It's forehand. a good passing shot, to be fair. I was, mean, yeah. yeah but but yeah, having, yeah. I mean, it's one that maybe you would expect Yannick to, to take, but he did. Mm -hmm. So Sinner has the only break. Um, what about remember... Alcaraz? What about Alcaraz? Sorry, Alcaraz Zverev. Who do you think's winning and why? <laughs> I mean, um, I tweeted saying that I don't trust Alcaraz because last, look, uh, RG 2022, I was really confident. I mean, I thought there was no chance for Zverev. And yeah. we know what happened. Yeah. Um, and then, okay, they played in Madrid. Um, I wasn't convinced with Zverev's level. And, I mean, the, the gulf was so big. The delta was so big. In between also, that wasn't that, that Madrid final? You know, I think Zverev certainly said he was affected by playing until like 3 o'clock mm -hmm. in the morning the night, night before. Yeah, that's true. And then they also played in Madrid last year in the fourth round. Uh, again, like I said, the delta on their level, their levels were so large. I mean, Zverev, yeah, well, he was losing those matches to Medvedev. Um, but yeah, he made the fourth round and I didn't think, okay, and Alcaraz was playing some of the best tennis he's ever played. Uh, you know, during that stretch from Indian Wells all the way to uh, Madrid, he played some amazing tennis. Um, so, yeah, I was not surprised by that result at all. It was one and two. And then U.S. Open, I had a feeling because Zverev had just beaten Sinner. He actually yeah. played really well, I thought. That first set, was... though, was, was really a match of endurance. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so what happened after that, it was straightforward. When I had a feeling, okay, you know what, I'm not going to underestimate Zverev because I did that at the RG and we know what happened. But Alcaraz won fairly comfortably. Really, he was not troubled at all. 
played in Turin. Actually, I picked Zverev to win in Turin just because of the conditions. I mean, Zverev won in Turin, and the the conditions suit his game like perfectly. While Alcaraz, we knew that he was struggling, and or at, at even now, I don't think his indoor hard court game is that strong. Um, so. Yeah, I was not surprised, but Australian Open, I definitely was surprised. It, it felt like RG again because, I mean, we saw that match he played against Kitsmanovic. Uh, because with RG, I, I, you know, looking back in hindsight, I thought, okay, you know what? He actually did, uh, he almost lost to Ramos Vignolas in the second round. Was sort of scrambling anyway. Uh, but, any whatever. But the Australian Open, he got broken once throughout. So there was no reason really. And he, Zverev, I mean, I know when you serve, uh, you know, at such a high percentage, or you, you know, when you get is, uh, you know, get the spots right, like almost every time, there's not much you could do. But Alcaraz dropped a stinker. I mean, he could, at the least he mm. could have done is at least, you know, play his service games to his own terms, push to push a tiebreaker, and then see where it goes. Because we know Zverev, uh, I mean, he he his nerve management is terrible. So if you get Zverev in a you know, yeah. position where it's a tiebreaker. Yeah, you just never if he'd know, have like, forced if he'd have forced a fifth set in Australia, I think mm-hmm. I think we'd have seen a a, a sort of similar. I mean, that's exactly what Medvedev did in many ways. I mean, uh, forcing that fifth set, you just thought, ah, okay, um, that this is not good territory for Zverev to be in. Yeah, exactly. Because once, yeah, once he closed there, especially Zverev at five four on his serve, and then you know Medvedev played a good point i think at 4-5 and yeah he got fortunate at 5 all and yeah once he closed out you just felt okay yeah you know it's, it's a good chance that Medvedev's running away with this but then yeah like you said he could have at least pushed a fifth i remember Zverev went up a break first game in the fourth Alcaraz played a really good service game to break again and then i thought okay you know what maybe this is the first time this is it for him to come back from two sets down didn't happen i mean he, again 4-3 i think he had break points so he had a chance i know he had a look at deuce at least alcaraz in the fourth set didn't happen yeah and then yeah and then it, i, I think I, these I, matches shuri are arguably the, the, this this particular matchup is the hardest to call on the tour uh yeah. on the atp tour I, I i i must say i've probably gone into most of their matches and got the wrong one i'm gonna go alcaraz because i just think that he's a little playing a little better than he was uh than he was say two, three, four months ago. I still don't think we're, I'm not convinced he's back and I won't be until I see a, uh, an unbelievable performance against a Yannick or a Novak. Um, but I do think he's playing a bit better. Um, but today and potentially Friday will be the the litmus test of, of that, or Saturday, so I should say, the litmus test mm-hmm. for that um, prognosis. Yeah, I agree because with Al, I, I, I mean, I would say there's more with someone like Sinner, Medvedev even, you can tell how well they would play for the rest of the tournament based on one or two performances. With Alcaraz, it, it feels like everything's in a vacuum. Like he played... Who gave him a ch- who gave Medvedev a chance against him at the US Open considering right. how well he was playing? Who mm-hmm. gave Zverev a chance at the Australian Open considering how he was playing? I mean, we just yeah. felt... Yeah, that's the other thing. Zverev's... Zverev's performances in Australia left a lot to be desired yeah. um, until that match. Exactly. I mean, he was going, what, he went five sets twice in... Cam Nori and a fellow German, I forget. Klein, uh, yeah. yeah. Lucas Klein. I, he represents Slovakia, but yeah, I guess he's... A okay, fellow. okay. Yeah. I thought yeah, maybe anyway. he went four sets. There maybe he went four sets with another German in the first round. Was it, um, it wasn't Altmaier, it was... Well, oh, no, it was uh, Kepfer. Okay. Kepfer, oh, yeah. Okay, so it was four yeah. sets, but I think there might have been some set points for Kepfer at some point. Yeah, he had, he had a set point or two in the third set. Again, yeah. so I've just aced him down there. But yeah, I don't remember after who he played in the third round. Oh, no, it was uh, uh, Mikkelsen. Cam Noy was, was fourth round, wasn't it? And Cam Noy right. possibly had had that. I mean, he just played a terrible uh, tie. Wait, Nori was uh, third round or fourth round? No, it was fourth, I think. Oh, yeah, lovely yeah, yeah. return there from Yannick. Hmm. Ooh, okay, he's just so yeah. I mean, the second I, the I, second I, serve is is that's not that's that's just almost too easy for Yannick that one. Yeah, I mean, he's going to do something more. Usually a good bet, especially from uh, from the ad side. 
And a slice serve up the tee or down the tee is a good bet. Jane, uh, just reading your comment, by the way, I'm just wondering if you've ever chosen Manorino to win a tennis match. I, I don't know why, but Jane doesn't like Manorino. I think he's a fairly nice guy who's obviously towards the end of his career, but he's pulling out the best results. And he, he, he doesn't seem to have a sponsor, or if he does, it's very understated. He's bald, which gets a point <laughs> for me as well. Uh, you know, he just seems like a fairly unassuming guy i mean maybe it's his tennis it can be a bit unorthodox but also maybe not the most exciting but to see a guy in his mid-30s getting the best results of his career it's um and considering i don't know if he ever showed anything particularly before his mid-30s that suggested he was going to be a top 30 top tw did he make, make the top 20 in the end i, don't he, mean, I think he did yeah yeah it's the winning, thing. winning 500s you know and stuff like that did he win a 500? Yeah, he won Newport. I thought that Newport. was a 250. Oh, it might be a 250. But I think he's won yeah. a 500 as well. Did he win like Astana? Astana is a, was a, you know, downgraded back to 250 last year. Oh, okay. But let me just see. Manami, Manami, no, ATP Tour 5. Anyway, he's won titles. But I thought, I thought he'd won a 500 somewhere. No, I don't think he is. Okay. So yeah. Newport's 250, is it? Okay, yeah. Yeah, Astana was back, back to 250 last year. And a star too, yeah. Yes. Uh, thing with Manorino. Um, yeah, I, I remember. Sophia, I, Astana, Newport. Yeah, all 250s, I think. Sophia is a 250, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. Yeah, again, in the slams, he made a few fourth round appearances. As in Gambian, I mean, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, he's he's dropped a couple of stinkers in four fourth round. One, I remember he lost to he got bageled by Federer in the first set in like fifteen minutes at Wimbledon, twenty eighteen. Um, and now uh, he's annoying because he. Hmm, I guess Jane. That's funny though. That's funny. She's being yeah. like humorous there. Probably I mean, I know like Medvedev or Korda, one of those. I know. Things. I know some people do actually dislike people because they beat their player. I mean, I can understand yeah, maybe. I, I can understand with man with Murray and Demonor. I think that probably Demonor uh, would do my head in if I was a Murray fan. I see fan. two matches in which Murray had match points. I know. I think he had a, did he have a double break up on him in? In in one tournament, Bercy. maybe Paris Bursa, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's when the up. racket smash happened, yeah. Yeah, he was two rakes up. He lost. I mean, I, even when he served five two, I just felt yeah he could yeah. lose. You know? yeah. Uh, yeah, and to think that Demino emulated Djokovic, I mean, is to become the only player aside from Novak to beat Murray six times in a row. It's crazy. No one. Oh, else. okay. Yeah, I thought Federer did it, but turns out he's done it five times in a row. So has Rafa, pretty sure. Okay. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, anyway, yeah, Lehechka managed to hold there. It was, I think, good for now. You don't want to go two breaks down. Right. Um, so, yeah, Sinner is, again, looking rather untroubled on serve, aside from it was a service game. Again, that was... Uh, at 40 15 to 40 30. I don't think he was that actually 30 all. Um, yeah, well, the hedge guy just doesn't know what to do on the, on the on the return at the moment, just dumping all of these. He, either they're going long or he's dumping them into the net. <laughs> um, but so Potapova, by the way, or I should oh, really put it positively, Kostuk won the first set six love. Oh. Now, I don't know if that means, because of course I haven't seen a single point, but I don't know if that means Potapova is throwing in one of those performances that I think she's capable of, or maybe Kostuk is just playing out of her mind, or Kostuk, of course, she got to the San Diego final, did she recently, and lost to Bolter? I, yeah. I, 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 I listen. I get a lot of my predictions wrong, and 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 occasionally I get them right. And I'm going to mention one that I kind of got right. I went into this tournament and I confidently said that the Bolter win in San Diego um, and the Kostuk loss in the final, but it'll be Kostuk who has the last laugh at this tournament, at least by by going further. 
I just I just felt that that San Diego final, and I also think Bolter and her career that might be that might be where she ends up. You know that she'll pick up some more five hundred and stuff, but seemed like she held the occasion a bit better than than Kostyuk, rather than necessarily mm. being the better player. Plus, I just think that that Kostyuk is on an upward trajectory, and 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 she'll be fine. She'll be fine. It's, especially if she can handle another final a bit better. I'm not predicting Kostyuk to win this tournament, but, um, you know, I think that there's good things coming from her and she's she's on a good trajectory. I think there's a stream going on simultaneously, right? With Jerome yep. and... Yep. Right. Yeah, Jerome and I were actually chatting about the women's draw and he thinks that Kostyuk could trouble Shriantek. That's an interesting take, I thought. Okay. Uh, I just think what he and I agreed on was we don't want a Shuantek golf final. I don't think anybody wants that. Um, aside from Shuantek final fans, probably. Um, because, I mean, the conditions suit Shuantek's game to a T. I, I, I can't think of anybody beating her unless they just redline and take the racket out of her hands. I mean, we saw Ostapenko do it last time, like 21, when she beat her. Uh, I didn't read too much into that result. I mean, much different Shion Tech to what we saw in 22. Uh, and then, of course, last year, Rybakina won, but then... We Just quickly, that, that was a great point from Lehetska to get to... Oh, yeah, it was. Last. Yeah, it was actually... Yeah. Uh, but no, no, it's good, it's good. Yeah, I, 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 I sure, we, um, uh, am a little bit despondent right now about the women's draw because... Yeah, I know what you mean about golf. I completely understand that that golf that Sviontek final could be quite predictable. Uh, I did like the way golf approached the. I think they played each other in the quarters. Golf and uh, golf played. Um, I think played uh, Sviontek in the quarterfinals at the French Open last year. Yeah. And, uh, and the way she approached the first four, five, six games. In fact, maybe a little bit more. I might have got to like four all, and golf was playing tennis that. I hadn't really seen her play before and maybe even since in that she was actually taking it to Sviantec a bit more yeah. than you would normally expect. Yeah. Now, if she can do something like that, because I know she's won one match, but that was in a, in a, in the form of Goff's career uh, on a faster outdoor court in North America uh, back in August in, um, was it Cincinnati maybe? Yeah. It was um, Cincinnati. Yeah. So, and also maybe Sviontek, that's still, I think Sviontek was maybe up a break in the third uh, from memory, but certainly there were there were chances there for Iga. Um, so, yeah, I, I get it. But my concern is if it's not going to be Coco who's going to, you know, do something, I'm a bit concerned. I, I actually want now as a neutral observer, I, I like Iga, I've got nothing against her. But I actually wanted to go out because then that blows everything. <laughs> that blows everything. Yeah, up. I see what you mean. Yeah, but again, that would I guess that would be mean it would happen for the second one thousand in a row uh, in Dubai. We had two unseeded finalists, I mean, Paolini and Paulini, and also qualify in Kalinske, uh, yeah. which was a. I, I it wasn't a super high quality final, but it was still. I mean, it had the thrills and spills and drama for sure. Um, and yeah, I, I felt. I mean. For what was a bit alarming was we didn't really think Kalins of Kal the Kalinsky Shiontek matchup because we thought okay Coco was uh, you know when I think she was six two up on Kalinsky and then we thought okay it's definitely a Shiontek and golf semis but then Kalinsky mounted a comeback and ended up winning it and they never played before that so we didn't know what to expect and you know so I guess uh, Shiontek was in danger there because. Obviously, Kalinske was riding that wave of form. She'd beaten who Ostapenko and Goff consecutively. And obviously, Shiontek maybe felt some pressure because she was the only top seed left after that point. And, you know, that I don't know if she was thinking of this because when we when someone asked her at the press conference, she said she's only going to take it one match at a time because the conditions were so different in Dubai compared to Doha. But... Yeah, the Dubai, Doha, Dubai doubles, like, I mean, kind of elusive. Uh, so I don't know if that played a part or just the con like the game, game stand not suiting the conditions so well. Probably both. But here, does she play, does she potentially, so does the winner of Iga and Wozniacki play the winner of Potapova and Kostyuk? Yeah. Okay. Okay. 
Yeah, well, Kostuk, Kostuk, um, Sviontek, yeah, that would be interesting. Yeah, uh, it would be. But again, Kostuk, Raducanu, I, you know, some players that I don't see really, unless you know they're. I mean, dining. if Raducanu was producing results at least, and maybe even performances like Kostuk was right now. You know the world, but obviously, particularly the British media would be just going crazy. If That's she true. if she got to the final in San Diego and she was winning six three three love in an Indian Wells quarter final, the British media would be saying Emma's back. Yeah, they would be sure. Uh, or, I mean, or she would have beaten Sabalenka. She had, did she have a set point or two? She yeah, had a set she point. Yeah, I think she did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She did. I think she did it. Maybe six five or, or, or five. Uh, Five four, but yeah, um, she was a breakdown as well in that in that second set. <laughs> Sabalenka's performances, though, maybe throughout the tournament were kind of off throughout. I yeah. think there was an injury issue, perhaps in her final match, but um, yeah, I, I agree. Um, okay, this is getting interesting. I think Sinner was thirty love up. Now it's thirty all. Okay, uh, I guess you're a point behind. But yeah, um, the yeah. Couple of I can see the points. Right. The Ash Cup played pretty good by again. He was dictating the rally, and then you know, Sinner threw in a lob and easy put a mismatch for the Ash Cup. Like, interesting. Let's see what happens here. Thirty all. Looks like the Ash has added some bulk to his upper body, um, or maybe I've just not seen him often. I'm not sure, but it seems that way at least to me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, so for someone who doesn't appear that big, as in like muscular. Uh, Yannick does. Big point for the Hedge Cup. has missed the backhand. It's gone long. Yeah. Yeah, I want you to okay. talk me through this, man. Trui, hui. Should I talk us yeah. through this one? Please. Yeah. All right. Uh, Sinner's getting ready to serve. I think he was totally love up. Now he's facing break point for the first time in this match so far. Serve down the T. Lehechka goes long with the forehand return. That was a pretty good serve. Clutch from Sinner saves the break point. Juice. Yeah, although I was hoping for an epic point one way or another. Um, so Sinner serving, yeah. I mean, that is the... Probably, it's actually not been mentioned so much in the last couple of months, but uh, it was the comment in the back end of last year. It's like, Sinner is now serving with the best. That was something that I know that, again, it's kind of probably an Anglo, and when I say Anglo, I mean English-speaking, centric view uh, that we've often focused on Yannick and, and Cahill. Um, I call him Cahill rather than mention his first name because I, I always get him, and there's a footballer called Tim Cahill, and I'm always calling him Tim. <laughs> oh, and yeah, right I think now, he played for Chelsea, didn't he? Because he uh, played for yeah. Everton, definitely. Oh, there Everton. was a Ga- Gary Ga- Cahill played for Chelsea. Yeah, there was okay. a Tim Cahill for Everton, and now there's this Cahill. What's his first name? I've forgotten. Darren Cahill. Darren Cahill. Thank you. So uh, when I there's a sort of an Anglo-centric sort of thought on the, oh Darren Cahill. To be honest with you though, it's his Italian coach who's done a lot of the technical stuff. And both to be fair to Darren, he has said in a press conference, "Lit, look, thank you for giving me all this praise, but in this part of Yannick's game." I'm like 1% responsible and I forget the Italian coach's name, but I can see him right now, a ball guy, um, another ball guy. This is all about ball people today. Um, he's the one who's doing the, the technical stuff and I'm doing a lot of other stuff, you know, game management, some of the mental side and Yannick himself in a press conference laid it out in pretty much black and white. Mm-hmm. If you see technical stuff, it's this guy. If you see mental tactics preparation maybe even in match st- tweaks then that's down you know and that's that's the balance of their team yeah i mean but it's fair enough to still give credit to darren right because yeah that definitely. Was, i'm just thinking uh, that we we all know who darren is and we all because because this is mm-hmm. the this is the english speakers and we know i mean yeah darren yeah, is yeah. the one who gets mentioned in every press conference it's not mm-hmm. and I, i'm going to check the italian guy's name if if uh i know that if um damien was here he'd be going crazy because we don't know who <laughs> or even worse <laughs> if it was if yeah, it was I um wanted to say Ricardo Piatti, but i think they split no, Piatti, yes, and him split a couple of years ago. And yeah. I know Piatti because he's got that sort of well-known Yeah, academy. of course. Yeah. Oh, so Potopo has broken back in this second set. Ooh, yeah. 
And uh, mm. by the way, uh, Yannick did end up holding reasonably comfortably. Yeah. With some good serves. Yeah, good serves and, you know, unreturned. Yeah, a couple of unreturned serves and, like, you know, forehand go, going long. Simone Vagnozzi. All right. Yeah. That name rings a bell now. But, yeah, that, I think that more than anything, that's what Yannick needed, the belief, uh, because the game was there. And, yeah, the game did need tweaking also. Because what I'm most impressed with him is the matchup against Medvedev. I mean, if you if you watched him play, you know, during the entirety of that matchup, he's not playing differently. Say, for example, Tsitsipas, when he won four matches out of like six or so against Medvedev after losing the first five, he started playing differently. I mean, sure, one of them was at RG and, you know, he just outplayed Medvedev. Um, but yeah, there were, there were those two matches in 2022 where Tsitsipas was just playing a completely different game against Medvedev compared to other players. You know, serve and ball, he was at the net almost the entire match. Uh, but Yannick didn't really do that. Oh, two set points for Sinner. Slipping away pretty fast for Lehechka. I mean, would be a disappointment if he just combusts here just because, you know. Yeah. I, I don't feel like I would with a lot of matches, people. though, that this is done and dusted. I mean, Sinner, when he won that first set against Kokinakis, um, and other times when you see big heavyweights winning a... winning a, Especially as I think Kokinakis was toe-to-toe -to -toe with Sinner for the first seven or eight games. Um, yeah. And and where, where when Lehetska saved both of those uh, set points, by the way. Yeah, I still think there's some, there's some there's a lot of work still to be done for Yannick. I don't see him racing away with this. Even if he does get the job done in this game, yeah. If he does race away with it, it would be because Lehechka just you know capitulates. Could happen, right? Um, if could he ends do, up but I, I think this would be another mightily impressive result if if Yannick wins this in straight sets and 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 comfortably. Yeah. Oh, that was a good pass. I guess he got lucky with the let. Was there a let court? Let me check. Yeah, there was a left corner of the return. Gave Sinner a bit more time uh, to tee up for the pass. And he, obviously, there's the apology. And... I wonder if Lehetska maybe should do that body serve a bit more. The one he did on the previous one. Yeah, that, that he seemed to be sure because he was jamming up Sinner. Um, yeah. Especially and, in and the backhand. It's very uh... difficult for Yannick to produce. I mean, I know we're talking about the second serve with Lehetska, but it's going to be very difficult for Yannick to, to do what he loves. Oh, yeah, I was just in that net cord. It was a it it still sat up okay. I mean, maybe the bounce was a bit lower than he would have liked. I still think he went the wrong way with this forehand. It was the easier direction to do it, but I think if he goes the other direction, there's a few more questions for Yannick to answer on the backhand side. Oh, so Sinner takes the opening set. And Sinner does take the opening set. Um give us a quick overview of where we're at in the match while I just raid my fridge. Hmm. All right. Uh so yeah. First set to Sinner, I think. What was it? The f first couple of games were interesting. I mean, Lehechka was going toe to toe, but you know, of course, um, Sinner broke probably decisively uh, in the third game of the first set. Lehechka, uh, I think he had no, he didn't have a chance then. But four three, when Sinner was serving, he was thirty love up, and then you know, Lehechka played a few good points um, on return to see a break point but honestly nothing much he could have done from there because you know Sinner I think first the break point was served with, let's say with an on return uh, serve there was a, a rally you know cross court exchange on uh, uh, a deuce uh, where you know Sinner obviously pulled the trigger on a decisive forehand and the cup missed that was a forced error more than anything and Lehechka went long again on game point. That, I would say, was an unforced error. And then, of course, he just sort of unraveled in that final game. He did well enough to get it to deuce. Then, of course, we saw that point with the let court and him getting passed. And then, again, a lose unforced error um, from, uh, from Lehechka. Let me just pull up the stats and see where... While you pull up the stats... 
Uh, I can just tell everyone that Kostuk has broken again. So oh, she's now 4 2 up. But at least this set is looking a bit more competitive because not only is it 4 2, but it's actually love 15 on the Kostuk serve. So it looks like Potapova has woken up a little bit. Right. Seven winners apiece, but uh, the unforced errors is where, you know, it, it proved costly for Lehechka. Four unforced errors for Sinner, 17 for Lehechka. Ten of them from the forehand, which is not really surprising. He missed mm. way too many forehands. Two double faults and, of course, five backhand errors. And, I mean, the forehand errors have a few with the net also. Uh, volume misses. Um, and then, yeah, some regulation forehands he could have made, which he ended up missing. Will be interesting to uh, see how the second set pans out. I mean, does Lehechka just put that behind him and you know start afresh, uh, you know, from a clean slate, or is he still thinking about it and is he de demoralized? Or and you know, obviously the sinner, uh, uh, you know, stamp his authority and run runs away with it. Uh, we saw some interesting changes yesterday from Holger Rune mid match in terms of where he was kind of stood on the court. Um, and I did hear, to be fair, to Patrick Moatoglu, who does get criticism, including from me from time to time. But I did hear the conversation between the two of them at the end of the first set, which was basically telling him to hug the baseline a bit more. Yeah. But regarding this match, I think Lehetska, you know, those two points that I mentioned at the beginning of the match probably were replicated a couple more times as well. And really, you know, that, that set... Had had should have been a tie break, I think. You know, should have been the Hetzka plays the way he normally can. You know, there was the net court as well. I, I, very very fine margins that first set, despite the double break and six three score line. Yeah, that's true. Um, lose forehand uh, inside out, no down the line. Actually, he was on the uh, due side of the court, of course. So uh, yeah, it was a loose shot went out. 30-15. Um, but yeah, like you said, at least he could, you know, the least he could have done was push a tiebreaker. Uh, but yeah, you just lose shots all over the place and it just mm. cost him. I mean, not even going too hard on him for the break point, but the manner in which he got broken the first game, I mean, the first time that is in the on the third in the third game of the match. So oh yeah, the break point the break point was tough, wasn't it? Because Sinner did a good first serve. Yeah, yeah, the break point, yeah, I'm not going down too hard on it because, yeah, on return, so not much you could have done with, uh, you know, that serve. But the one-all game, really, I mean, he did well to save the break points initially, but, yeah, just kept handing it back to uh, Sinner with errors from the forehand. By the way, for, for those of you tuning in, I can see we've got quite a few people on YouTube now, um, please do click that subscribe button. Um, below it really does make a big difference particularly when we're trying to cover these tournaments I mean I had a message from somebody today asking for a particular press conference and I'm like listen we don't have the accreditation for that tournament but if we we want to get as many tournaments as we can and good news we've just been given accreditation for Miami uh, oh. so we will be covering that as well in person at least for a week of the tournament most of the first week and a little bit of the second so, yeah, but we need to get to 10K as soon as we can. So if you are watching on YouTube right now and you want more coverage and better coverage that I think we can produce, we need to hear that subscribe button. So please do so. Anyway, Sinner has held serve. Yeah, Lehechka had a good look sort of at that return on 30 all. It was a good one missed by a fraction because Sinner, I mean, he got jammed up completely and just... Uh, dumped it to the bottom of the net, but it was not, of course. But yeah, it's kind of a sticky situation, but Sinner gets out of it. He was 30 love up, got 30 all again. But I've yeah, just seen that return, board. yeah. That actually, I thought it had landed in the way Sinner reacted. Yeah, me too. And then I, I saw the shrug from the hedge guy, and then I was like, okay, he missed it. It was close, yeah. It's pretty close. Uh, match to follow right after this one, I think. Uh, I mean, it's following, uh, followed by rather than not before a certain time. It's uh, the second quarterfinal between Casper Ruud and Tommy Paul. Should be an interesting one. 
We'll see how the we'll see how the uh, what do you call it the the timings and stuff work out. We obviously got two streams going on at the same time right, uh, right now. What I what I would suggest if you're okay with this, Rupert, is me mm. and you join Kira, uh, Kira for uh, Wozniaki against um, Sviontek. But because I know you have um, access to the ATP tour, me and Kira can basically focus on the main thing, but have you there as well would be great just sort of giving us updates on on Kasparu Tommy Paul. Yeah, that works. It also gives me a chance to go get get some dinner as well. Yeah. At least yeah. having the two of you there. Yeah. 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 And of course, I mean Shiontek and Wozniaki um, you know, takes center stage definitely. Yeah, yeah I think it does. Yeah. Tommy Paul. Uh, so it's better to have someone like keep an eye on and give periodic updates while you focus I got- on got some information for you, Ashuhi, that maybe you're not aware of. Because I've known Mario for about 18 months now, and I didn't mm-hmm. know until yesterday. He's a bit of a Tommy Paul fan. Oh, no, I've known that for a while. <laughs> really? I didn't know. <laughs> yeah, we, we talk on almost, I mean, pretty much daily basis on WhatsApp. Oh, nice. Right. And, yeah, and uh, he, I'm aware of the players he likes. I mean, we, both of us, more or less like the same players. Uh, I also do like Tommy Paul. I mean, I wouldn't say I'm as big of a fan as Mario is. I mean, <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I, de- I, def- I enjoy watching his tennis and he, you know, he seems like a decent guy, I guess, uh, aside from the whole... Oh, decent guy, definitely, yeah. Yeah, the the weird Davis Cup debacle that he got himself into. Which debacle, sorry? The Davis Cup one where he was, again, arguing against doubles or arguing in favor of the exclusion of, who was it? Uh, Raji Brahm. Oh, the, okay. Yeah, I didn't know he took a stance on that. Yeah, he put out some really weird tweets, deleted okay. stuff. Uh, you know, and he was, yeah, he was saying, oh, yeah, you know, some of you people who live in the basements of your parents' house probably don't know, <laughs> don't have access to tennis TV and you would know that they don't care about doubles or something. Oh, uh, okay. Like I vaguely remember this now. Yeah, yeah. I, do yeah. Remember. I mean, I remember and, the Ram controversy. It, yeah, not as bad as Opelka because Opelka, I don't know. Like, if you yeah, look at, if you, Opelka, yeah. If you look at his Instagram, he has one highlight, and that is mocking like a bunch of stories mocking doubles, and like it, one it, of them it, was a response to somebody like you know, on a Q and A, uh, you know, asking about doubles, and he said, you know, abolish doubles completely. And then another one was I think a picture of a stadium. I don't remember which one exactly. I think he was Indian Wells. Last year, well, it was like, oh, the stadium cleared up pretty quickly. No one's, you know, clearly no one cares about the doubles. Uh, I don't know why, especially, I mean, you would think a nation that produced the Bryan brothers wouldn't be so. Uh, how, how, how By can the you way, Potapova broke, broke back again. So this is a set. Um, this is a set full of, of breaks, it seems, and still very competitive. Hi, Ashley, by the way. Uh, good to have you on board. Do hit that like button, please. Um, what did I go on to say? Oh, uh, Riley Opelka. Well, listen, I've come across Riley in a press conference, at least, anyway. And um, he's somebody who will have 10 opinions about 10 different things. The problem is, is, is the way we are today is that um you know we disagree with one thing and so therefore we throw we throw the baby out with the bathwater so to speak what mm-hmm. do i mean yeah. by that actually yeah. i have i have heard opelka articulate some arguments and i'm like yeah i think i'm with you on that one i mean I'll, yeah, one yeah of them, for sure i mean one I, of I, the, the, like... the russian the russian ban at wimbledon you know this is 2022 and he's like what we're going to do next year when the war could well still be happening are we going to let them play. Well, you, you can't let them play if this is your stance. Well, of course, a year later, that's exactly what Wimbledon did. And, exactly. and I was like, yeah, I, I think he's he's right. And um, the, the, the thing is, of course, he has... A, I mean, I disagree with him on the doubles, for example, and, and, and Tommy Paul as well, to, 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 to what you were just saying. Um, I just think that the doubles needs to be... You know, we need to help. We need to help. And, and we can. Yeah. And when yeah. you see those epic points like we saw on, on Twitter the other day with, with um, Djokovic and Murray on one side, who was on the other side of the net, by the way? Was it Stakowski and Yuzny, I think, yeah. Ah, yeah, exactly. Just an epic point and a bit more marketing like that and a few more tweets and a few more matches like that. Indian Wells, to be fair, in previous years has attracted some of the bigger names to, oh, yeah. to join the doubles I mean, tour. 
Yeah, 2011 was interesting. I remember Djokovic played Indian Wells with Troitsky, but he teamed up with Murray in Miami. And in if, uh, you probably remember this, but in Toronto, he, he and Nadal played together. And they played Pospisil and Raonic, lost in the first round, of course. But yeah, some of these players... Uh, Sinner is going to have joke. Mm, yeah, we're not very far away from that. Uh, maybe. By the way, Kostyuk is serving for the match. Um, oh. I may just dip out of this stream for a, a couple of minutes and I'll, I'll be back. All right, Shrihui? Sure, sounds good. See you soon. So what's happening here? Sinner is just held for 2-1, second set. Can't really make up much from what's happened so far. I mean, obviously, we the Hedgeka had that 30-all opportunity in the opening game, but other than that, I think it was also down with 15-30 in the previous service game. He held. Hey, he's on the back foot. All the pressure is on him now. Um, and really be interesting to see if you know he can bounce back. I mean, John and I obviously were talking earlier about his match against Djokovic at the United Cup. I mean, he was set in a breakdown. It was like 6-1, 2-1 or something to that effect. And then he took the second set. Something like that, maybe? Does he have it in him today? We don't know. Because Sinner, he is riding this uh, you know, massive wave of confidence. Confidence. Uh, it doesn't look like at the moment, anybody, I mean, if, if at all somebody beats him, I feel if at all if somebody beats him, it could be like an early upset at a Masters event. It's sort of like how, I want to say like how Djokovic lost to Wesley in Monte Carlo in 2016, maybe something like that is what I see happening. But uh, yeah, you know, where he's going to be feel a bit burnt out, uh, feel a bit of pressure uh, and then, you know, it's not, is it going to play below par? And then there's going to be a player who has nothing to lose and steps it up, beats him. I th I think that's what's going to happen. More more likely than anything else. Of course, won't rule out any of the other players like Alcaraz or Medvedev. Maybe even Zverev uh, from beating him. Yeah, my Hachka serving one two. Second serve out wide. Both players trading. Backhand from center, backhand from the Hachka into the net. Love 15. The Hachka is just grabbing his back, and uh, I don't know if he's just like getting rid of an air pocket or, you know, is he feeling some strain? Not sure. But yeah, he. There's no grimace, but not not the best body language at the moment for sure. Second serve again. Uh, Sinner gets it back into play, backhand from the Hedgeka, backhand from Sinner, backhand from the Hedgeka, forehand from Sinner, forehand from the Hedgeka, backhand from Sinner. Ooh, very odd looking forehand error from Sinner. Hit the middle. I mean, I think the contact point was below the middle of the net. Yeah, just showing the replay of Lahechka. Uh, you know, grabbing hold of his back and just yeah, stretching out a little bit. I mean, considering his sort of elaborate service motion. I do see why, you know, he, he may be prone to back issue. Okay, double fault, 15-30. Um, uh, again, he's just trying to loosen himself up. Looks like he's struggling a bit with his back. Anyway, let's go, so 15-30. It's a fault. I mean... The camera was just focusing on the hedge cut the whole point. <laughs> I, I couldn't tell what happened. So it was a fault. Second serve. And the hedge cut. Tennis TV, what are you doing? Switch it back. Okay. Was it? Was it a let for service? I, I couldn't tell. Because it looked like a first serve again. 
out wide, which was unreturned, of course, in 15.30, and now it's back to 30 all. There was a bit of a fist pump from the Hedgecar, which means... Okay, yeah, I, I can actually see from his service motion. So, uh, he's dumped the four in the net, and it's a break point for center. Yeah. You can kind of see from his service motion that, you know, it definitely looks hindered. Break point for center could be decisive, you know. Serve down the T from the hedge cuff. Back and down the line, Sinner lobs him, lob lads right in the baseline. The Hedgeka was shuffling back, got the forehand back in play. And now they're just trading backhands cross court. And Sinner, lazy looking backhand, dumps it into the net. The Hedgeka saves a break point for now. Yeah, I agree, Sean. Um, quite a difference the last few months have made. I mean, you know, there's this whole running joke about post puke Sinner. Where he just grabbed that bin and threw up. I wonder what he threw up. Was it some radioactive material that was in his body? I have no idea because since then, this has been a different player. I mean, it, it's surreal to talk about him the same way we would talk about, you know, Djokovic. Or we have been talking about Djokovic for the better part of the last decade. So already built that kind of aura and confidence. And yeah, the head cup misses that backhand cross court. It's another break point for Sinner. I see John's back. So, what this cost you close that out? Let's turn you up. I've got the sound turned down. Ah. Can you hear me now, Shahui? Yes, I can hear you. Ah, great. Uh, we've, we're on the second break point here for Yannick, right? Yep. It is. Let's go. Doesn't look 100% physically, by the way. It was just you okay. know, trying to uh, ease himself out. Uh, you know, was grabbing hold of his back a couple of times. Oh. Uh, I think with these yeah. epic streams, oh, yeah, he <laughs> should have probably done more. Um, again, again, maybe should have done more. Yeah, the volley, I mean, he fed it right to Sinner. Sinner was going there. I mean, he, he had, he was teed up for the backhand already. You know, maybe a, a drop volley, try to make Sinner scramble on the forehand side. But no, I mean, I, I think this is probably the decisive break for Sinner. Yeah, it does feel like that, yeah. Yeah, you know, coming back to what I was saying about Sinner, it just feels crazy. I mean, watching that press conference, again, yeah, well, he won day. He didn't win. Italy as a whole won the Davis Cup. But I didn't think, mm -hmm. okay, you know, you would back that up with an Australian Open win beating Djokovic and Medvedev. Just, yeah. I, again, it, it just makes... Uh, the storyline so much more interesting in men's tennis because, of course, Alcaraz is a, kind of going through a cold patch at the moment since winning Wimbledon. He's made one final and hasn't won a title since also. But, you know, to see someone, I mean, Sinner, he was a rival only purely in terms of the matchup. Uh, but, you know, it, it, it felt so futile to talk about them, you know, being the future of tennis or this being the future rivalry when Carlos had just separated from him by quite a distance. I mean, after Alcaraz won Wimbledon, it was like two slams and four Masters 1000s. Mm. World number one. And Sinner was barely in the top 10. I mean, he was yeah ranked eight or seven or something to that effect. Didn't even have a big title. A lot has changed since, and which is, which is good for men's tennis. I mean, Yannick, let's think about August of last year. Yannick had yet to win a 1,000. Yeah. Um, and he was also, you know, if we talked about his record against players like Novak, to some extent, Carlos, although he had a few good wins, actually, so probably not Carlos. But if we talked about his record against, if we looked at his record against Novak in August of last year, which is only six months ago, um, seven months ago, and if we look at looked at his record against um, Medvedev at that point, which I'm guessing was six and zero, oh, yeah, because um, it's now six four. I think we didn't. It's unbelievable. They had four matches in four months, five months. I mean, it's insane, right? And four, obviously, top, top, top matches, semifinals and finals and stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it can sometimes take you five years to get from six 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 zero to six four, um, mm -hmm. but he did it in five months. 
Yeah, I mean, Vanch and I spoke about this, but to us, I mean, he's in agreement with me on this. The 6-0 felt deceptive, to be honest, because there were close matches. There was a match in Turin where Sinner had match points. Not, I mean, it didn't matter for either player because ball. I mean, Medvedev was through and Sinner was out. Um, yeah, I mean, crazy to think that it's the same. Yeah, that's so, funny. Isn't it? <laughs> you can see she's giggling with that with that uh, that comment. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah, yeah, that's the thing. I mean, you look at uh, Sinner fans on Twitter; it's, they're just quoting old tweets and like, "Oh, we were in the trenches not very long ago," and that's okay. right because. Because, I mean, after who would have thought this is what we would have seen after he lost to Zverev at the US Open? We're starting to wonder, is, you know, is the ceiling lower than we thought it was? And also the, the physicality thing reared its head with that defeat again in the US Open. It's like, listen, yeah, this guy can't last five sets. And, it's, and we we're also looking at a guy who'd been playing Grand Slams for almost four years by that stage. So it's not like a, a newbie. Um, exactly. Yeah. Also beats Zverev at a Grand Slam, no less. Um, yeah, like you said, and yeah, but there was also a time when I mean, there were those two matches against Rafa at RG, equally disappointing yeah. to be honest. They serve for the set. Was one was one four sets though? Was the second one four sets? No, both were straight sets, both were straights. Okay, they played a match in Rome also. I think there was also seven five, seven five, seven five, six four, or something like that, and that was like the opening round for Nadal. Um, but yeah, he served for this set both. Yeah, it was like 5 3 in the first set at RG 2021. And I remember he lost eight games in a row from there. And then he won three games in a row after. And then he lost eight games in a row again. Uh, yeah. he, it was 4 0 to 4 3 in the second. And then from 4 3 in the dog won 6 3 6 love. Lehetska had a chance there at 30 15. He With did come down the line, just going out. Yeah, it well, wasn't wasn't super easy, but just you got to make that. You got to make that against you know the best player in the world, in my opinion, right now. Yeah, for sure. I mean, there's no contest there, really. No, he's only been all. broken once all tournament sinner, and that was also. Yeah, was that only once. No, Shelton, yes. Uh, Shelton, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, it may not have happened either because he, you know, he had set point on serve and he got broken out of mm. kind of out of nowhere. I didn't watch the match, but... This but was, that's him. Listen, that's a great, you know, stat for the quarterfinal. So what's that? Um, second round, third round, fourth round. I mean, if he doesn't get broken today, that'll be four matches, okay? And I guess eight sets because I don't think he's dropped a set yet either, obviously. Um but still, eight sets, um, presumably around about eight times six is 48. So roughly, I don't know how many, but I bet it's around about 50-odd games. He's probably Has he been to a tie break yet? Yeah, against Shelter. The first okay, set. so yeah. So for, it's probably, if I've got my maths right, eight sixes are 48. Um, and therefore, one tie break could be 49, serv 49 service games, I think. Mm, although yeah. I could be wrong on that. Anyway, I know, whatever. Know. A lot of a lot of a lot of matches, and again, on these slow courts, yeah, you it's know, pretty good. yeah. And his serve is really, really good. It's top five, probably, certainly top ten in the world, probably, possibly even top five in the world right now. Yeah, I mean, Medvedev with... had a look at that one break point at three all in the fourth. Who knows what would have happened, right? If he didn't... oh, you're talking about Aussie Open now, yeah. yeah. Um, if yeah. if Medvedev got that break, I mean, again, four three. I don't think he loses from there. To be honest, no, I don't think so. Especially as that was fourth set. I mean, the fatigue was starting to set in. I feared the worst for for for, for Daniel when he lost that third set. But if he gets to a position where he's yeah. two holds away from, I the don't title. think because again, the match against Hurkacz, fifth set, he gets the break. You know, he yeah, wins. he yeah. mentioned that in Dubai as well. He was like, there was not a moment in that match against Kumber. Uh, where he felt, okay, you know, once I turn this around, I'm not going to lose it from here. Potapov has um, just saved a match point. Yeah, Medvedev interestingly said that he felt the conditions were quick yesterday. Yeah, but he's, there's three or four players that have said that, and yet apparently Gil Gross said the stats don't back that up. Mm. I mean, Andy Murray said the same, um, and there's one or two other players, I think, that have joined that, that quick party. But at least at the end of the second round, I think it was, when there've been a bunch of matches, um, the stats in terms of, of speed, etc., didn't suggest that. But 
Yeah, but I guess so. Yeah, he, Gilgros, I think, was going based on service stats and. Okay, service stats. Okay. Mostly, but, yeah, that's a pretty good indicator. I mean, sixteen breaks of serve in that match with Korda. It's that's nuts. Oh yeah, Korda Medvedev. Yeah, they do seem to produce some weird matches. Or, or Korda, who was oh Korda and Hatchinov was it? Korda against someone at Wimbledon the other year was was really crazy. Yeah, Hatchinov, twenty twenty one. Oh, uh, breaking news: Kostyuk has got the deal done. I'm gonna just join that stream. I'll be back in a couple of minutes. Oh, okay, right? sure, sounds good. See you soon. Uh, One thirty seven mile per hour miles per hour serve from the Hatchka at thirty all forty thirty. No, he's missed the first. No, it's an ace. Oh, it's an ace up down the tee. He holds. Yeah, catching half of that line. Sean, you and me both. I think a lot of people would be in agreement. We would be in agreement with this. Let's be honest. Uh, look, I I fear the worst. If if Zverev somehow somehow manages to get it done in straightforward fashion against Alcaraz today if he's fresh against Sinner yeah you know <laughs> I don't know like, this is, I'd rather not say because you know again a straight open Alcaraz looking red hot form much like here broken just once here okay he dropped the set to Arnaldi the first set in a breaker um, I don't think I've broken. No, he didn't get broken against Marajan. He didn't get broken against Felix. Both usually tough match matchups for him. Fine. And again, uh, I think Aussie Open thrashes Ketsmanovic. Uh, I th- did he drop a set to Sonigo? I think he did. Let me check. Yeah. Yeah, he lost the second set in a breaker and law dropped the service game there. Regardless, he steamrolled to the f- quarterfinal, drops an absolute stinker. I mean, Zver- th- th- that's why the score line was such because Zverev was peeking out of his brains and then Alcaraz was also playing horrendously. So, yeah, look, <laughs> I'm I'm prepared for the worst to be honest. Sinner serving. 15 love. Yeah, it's a tired looking forehand from the hedge guy. It's just, you know, mumbling away to himself. He's not very happy. You know, looks low on morale. And sturdy love. For Yannick, set a 4 2 in the second set. Serve out wide. It's the net. Second serve. It's a double fault. It's 30 15. Don't want to get into these sticky situations, do you? You just never know when the match should just turn around. Does Sinner. Do the sunshine double. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments. I mean, I think only two players this century, not this century, the last couple of decades have done it. I mean, some, I'm pretty sure players other than Djokovic and Federer this century have done it. But obviously, um, for that Novak did, Three that Federer did. And Medvedev was kind of close last year. I mean, he made the final Indian Wells, won Miami. Uh, you could say Alcaraz was close himself. Won Indian Wells semis in Miami. Anyway, it's 40-15 now for Sinner. Misses the first serve. Gets ready for the second serve. Backhand from the Hedgeka, backhand from Sinner. Hedgeka scoops it up. Um, Whoa, that was in. 
That was an excellent forehand from the Hedgecock. Sinner had the upper hand. Um, so he went in. There was a heavy forehand inside in. Uh, up up the line from center and then Lehechka just you know hits a running forehand cross court looked like it was going long but you know center can't get a racket to it it was right in the baseline it's 40 30 center's not out of this game just yet so uh, why it goes long Second serve from Sinner. Double fault. Hmm. What's going on here? That's the second double fault in the game for Sinner. One was at 30 all. The other one was at game point. He's already had two game points so far. And we're back to Deuce. Interesting turn of events. Coach is just egging him on. They, they want him to get over this finish line is quickly as possible and be in ideal shape for this up for the upcoming semi-final no matter who he plays missed the first serve second serve center backhand from the hedge cup forehand from center let's go oh the hedge cup drew center to the net center was at the net the looked to get the get this cheeky forehand passing shot at a certain angle with oodles of topspin clips the top of the net and sinner has another game point sinner is actually preparing you know for the other volley but obviously that forehand just missed First serve into the net. Second serve from center. Backhand cross court from the edge guard. Four. The forehand goes way long. And center holds for 5-2. The edge guard shortly will serve to stay in this match. I think Sinner was probably at 75% of his level this match. I don't think he's playing at his optimal level, which should give you a good indication of how I mean, how good he is at the moment and the fact that nobody's really close to him. He's in his own tier, followed by the other players, at least since October. Let me see what the stat... It was like 41... <laughs> Uh, one sec. Yeah, so Sinner was since, I mean, in, in, I would say in his last 45 matches, I don't know when that dates back to, 41 wins and 4 losses. That's bonkers. <laughs> 41 wins, 4 losses. Titles include... I mean, I, I don't know when this dates back. To, I'm assuming it dates back to Canada. So, I would include Canada, Toronto. Uh, Toronto, Beijing, Vienna, uh, Australian Open, Rotterdam. That's 5 titles. That is crazy. Three five hundreds, a Grand Slam. Masters 1000, bunch of wins against the top five. Um, I, I saw a stat where I think he has as many top five wins during that period than Tsitsipas has in his entire career or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, John, you muted. Yeah. I just said, I just said, oh, wow. Yeah, I, I saw that, and then I hear it, <laughs> and then I was like, "Okay, he's probably muted." But yeah, Lehechka had a bit of a chance in the previous okay. game because he had this passing shot, a deuce. Uh, it almost looked like it was going to roll over the net, and Sinner was preparing for the wipe, but clips the top of the net, lands back on his side, um, and then Sinner held from there, and you know Lehechka was not too happy walking to his chair. It'll, it could get interesting still. You know, I'm not ruling it out because Sinner served two double faults 
for no reason really in that previous game. Um, but has he had another break point in this set? Not yet. No. Yeah. Potapov, as you, you can probably tell, it also Kostuk has beaten Potapov in, in straight sets. Mm-hmm. Yeah, forehand uh, from center on the return was good enough to, I would say, force an error from the hedge card, dumped it in the net. 15 30, center is two points away from the Indian World semi final for second year running. Oh, so, but also the previous point, I mean, Lehetska, they're sort of whacking the ball away um, with annoyance because he put that routine forehand long yep okay then. oh lob lands in players are back to training forehands cross court uh Sinner steps it up clubs the backhand uh cross court for a winner a bit of a jumping backhand two match points I mean, the sunshine double, whatever people want to call it, it's looking like a sort of a happy hunting ground for Sinner for the last couple of years or so. 2022, there he, I, he, he withdrew from the fourth round. Oh, he, <laughs> that was almost a winner, but it obviously goes long. Sinner just blitzed the backhand uh, inside out on the return. Lance Ball. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Another match point for Lehechka. Well, backhand goes long from Sinner. Um, that bit of a fist pump from Lehechka. Nice to see. Save two match point. <laughs> still Back believes. He still believes. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, we, we like to see that, right? Because yeah, no, I, we do. Yeah. He, he looked like he was completely out of it, demoralized. Yeah, you know, I, I you know, there's no, no reason for me to stay here for longer, but he's fighting. Um you know, let's see if he can make it interesting at the very least. Second serve, deuce, backhand from center, forehand inside from the Hachka, slice from center. Uh, yeah, lose looking forehand from the Hachka, brings center back into the rally. Backhand clips the net. Backhand from center, forehand from the Hachka, forehand from center. Forehand down line from center, backhand from the Hachka. Was that a drop shot? Okay. Drop shot from Lehechka, uh, and Sinner puts that forehand wide. That was actually a pretty good drop shot uh, because you know both players in the forecourt, they're sort of trading slices, and then Lehechka went for the drop shot. Sinner um, was scrambling. Uh, he made it to that drop shot, but you know, obviously there's way too much spin for him to control it. Goes wide. Game point for the Hedgeka after having saved two match points. Yeah, nice. Uh, we've got a lot of people tuning in on YouTube right now, so please do hit the like button, but even more importantly, click subscribe, and let's see if Lehetska can hold serve. Okay, Sinner has just pummeled the forehand inside out for a winner, and we're back to juice. Pretty good backhand return from Sinner. Bring Lehetska on the back foot, and then... Going back to his backhand. Lechka thought he was going the other way. Gets wrong footed. It's back to Deuce. So, about why from Lechka unreturned from Sinner? So, it's game point once again. Yeah. Yeah, that forehand was mean from Sinner. Mean as in, like, amazingly good. No mercy. Yeah. No mercy as well, yeah. Yeah. Misses the first serve, so it's second serve. Game point on the hedge cup. Backhand on the line from Sinner, is that up? No. Well, okay, the backhand cross go right after is, again, showing no mercy. Very similar point to the previous game point. Deep return. Um, the hedge car is on the back foot. Sinner steps it up. Clubs the winner. Classic. Points played yeah. on serve. 46 for Sinner. 68 for the hedge cup. Good yeah, indicator who has been much more pressure. troubled on serve. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, backhand uh, into the net from Sinner. It's advantage to the hedge car. They just showed Bill Gates. 
again. Uh, for a lot of Djokovic <laughs> fans are not going to be very happy with that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, well, it's a game point. Once again, ooh, good for Sir when Lehechka holds. And there's a fist pump. That was a massive serve out wide. And, you know, just one of his coaches, Burdich, uh, you know, just clapping and egging him on. What, what more could he do at this point, right? Um, Sinner, having had two match points in the previous game, will now serve for it. Yeah. So at least he's asking the question. Of Bill Gates there. But at least he's asking the question, which is good. Yeah. Okay, so is there a twist in the tail? Is there a twist we'll in the tail? Yes, indeed. Serve out wide before and inside out from. Oh, okay, got away with it. Um, serve out wide and then forehand down the line from center, and then there was a lot from Lehechka, but then it was a loose smash from center, but Lehechka was just too far away to try and do anything with it. So, 15 love. Not looking like a twist just yet. No, I don't think there would be. Um, okay, serve was long, so it's a second serve. That steps in for the return. Trading backhands, far inside from center, far inside again from center, backhand cross court from Lechka, backhand to Lechka's forehand. Huge shank. <laughs> Third enough. <laughs> like, there was a massive shank. I mean, the ball still hasn't landed. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe landed way back in the stands. Who knows? Maybe is that is there an after effect of playing Sitsipas? Who knows? <laughs> Third enough. Serve from center of forehand inside out. Lehechka lobs it. Does it land in? Okay, it does. Okay, smash from center and then Lehechka can't do anything much with that. So yeah, um, this is the farthest thing from a twist in the tail so far. 40 love. <laughs> um, three match points. There's a tail, but it's pretty straight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> New match points for center. Third one, but he has these in bunches on his serve. Okay, kicker out wide. Oh, that that was a wild forehand. I don't know why you went for it. Just looking for some flamboyance, I guess, towards the end. Yeah. <sighs> um, That's the kind of thing that Juan Carlos Ferreira would go crazy about if that was Carlos. Mm-hmm. Maybe there's another match, fourth match point. It would be so weird if there's such a straightforward match and the highlight reel shows match point number nine and then he closes it up. Because yeah, we know yeah, it's, like, yeah. it's like so far from uh, anything that was interesting. Um, well, forehand from Sin. Okay, it's done. Yeah. Finally, Sarah converts his fourth match point. He's through his first man through the Indian World semi-final this year. And he awaits the winner, of course, of Alexander Zverev and Carlos Alcaraz, which will be coming up live on the channel later on this evening. So do make sure you uh, tune in for that one. And if you hit the subscribe button, but also click that notification bell, you'll be aware of that. We've also got Iga Sviontek against um, Caroline Wozniacki. We'll be covering that. Kasper Ruud versus Tommy Paul. We'll certainly have an eye on that during that particular encounter. So uh, that match will be coming up very, very soon on the channel. So it's tennis, tennis, tennis all the way. Um, regarding this particular win for Sinner, I actually said at the end of the first set that I, th I think I, I didn't quite say 6-3, 6-3, but I could see Yannick was serving first in the second set. So I just thought, well, if he just gets one bigger serve here, this has got 6-3, 6-3 written all over it. But Lehetska had his chances. Yeah. Again, yeah, if he would have taken those chances, you just don't know what would have happened. But again, I don't think it would have meant much. 
anything. I mean, it wouldn't have meant much differently. Um, I don't think so because well, ended up being straightforward. 35 unforced errors from the hedge cup. 19 from the forehand side. Three double falls and 13 backhand unforced errors. 13 winners and 13 unforced errors from Yannick Sinner. Not, nothing extraordinary, but you know, clean performance. Just what the doctor ordered. Um, yeah, I mean, he's I mean, the most impressed. Whatever happens in the the rest of these quarterfinals, he's the one who's had the most impressive passage there, right? Yeah, for sure. I mean, drop just or yeah, I agree. I mean, uh, because Alcaraz did drop a set. Both players got broken just once, but yeah, Carlos did drop a set. Sinner has dropped, dropped a set, but it was also sort of a scratchy. For I mean, I think he then. One twelve of the next thirteen games or something. I think he just what, dropped one game yeah. in the next two yeah. sets. But it was a it was a performance that was showing some anxiety. And yeah, and and Carlos said the same. What about that win over uh, Felix? I've seen a couple of different narratives on that one, and you can probably guess coming from the two different angles what they were. Was it? Was yeah. it? A, what were your thoughts? Well. Felix definitely, I mean, he, he was low on confidence. I don't think he was ready to take on Carlos just yet. I I thought, okay, if he played a match as good as he did last year, that would have been a right st step in the right direction. Um, but yeah, just way too many errors. The backhand got exposed really easily. And that, Carlos just felt like that was a match for him to fine-tune his game more. Um, what I was actually a bit more surprised by was that match against Marojan was really straightforward because yeah thought, okay well, they, they played that match in Rome and you know Marojan uh, you know played one of um, pro at at this moment the match of his life um, so I thought okay you know if they play maybe this could be the sort of boogie matchup for uh, Alcaraz but I mean it was far from it because. It was again. Marojan was the one who was on the back foot early on in the match, but he was still, you know, hanging tough with Carlos. But then once the gates opened, yeah, there was no way back from for Fabian from there. That being said, you know, for the reasons I mentioned earlier on the stream, I I don't want to take anything from those performances for Alcaraz, you know, to sort of make a prediction maybe for how well he'll do against Zverev. It's just we we have enough of a sample size to know that okay you know previous performances for Carlos may not mean as much. We saw that in Turin too. I mean okay, he, the match against Zverev was close, but he uh, he beat he played really well against Rublev and Medvedev. We thought okay you know have a blockbuster semis on the cards against Djokovic, he gets destroyed. You know yeah um, yeah it's happened quite a bit. So I I don't really I'm not really gonna. Uh, Make an assessment from those matches and try to extrapolate that to, uh, you know, his quarterfinal against Zverev. This match is it's a different match. It's a different opponent. Um, but that being said, Zverev's not really enjoyed these conditions. Um, no, Bamos no, he hasn't. Interesting, because um, he, you would say Forza, right? Because obviously, uh, if you do say Vamos, it's a point Spanish. for his. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Uh, he does have right. a we can continue this chat um, on our next stream, which will be coming up for you just in a few minutes from now between sure, Igor Sviontek and Caroline Wozniacki. And as I said, we will have an eye on Rude against Tommy Paul as well. So whether you're a fan of any of those four players or just a fan of tennis in general, do make sure you tune in. So um, click like on this video and subscribe and We'll see you there very, very soon. And Truhi, a big thank you for joining us for this particular stream. Pleasure. See you soon. Yep. And see everybody else. And you know the drill. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell so you don't miss out on all things tennis.
Thank you. Congratulations. Um, this afternoon, did you play the match of your life? And what did it feel like playing that match? A match of my life, I don't know, but it's um, for sure very, very important. Um, you know, as I say, it's, it helps a lot the last, the last competition that is a team competition and because you get a lot of energy from your teammates, from the whole team, and then the crowd is different. And I really enjoyed playing today. It was, uh, was a great match. I started off really well, and obviously in the second set he raised his level. And the third set, I, I, I just tried to, to hold my service games and, and, and waiting for a, for a good opportunity, which arrived on the 5 all, and I took it. And obviously it was a very crucial uh, match um, for, for the whole team. And at the end of the match, I was really happy for, for the team to be at least able to, to play a deciding doubles. And you know, we played really good, and I think it was a really positive, positive day today. Yannick, uh, I just want to ask you about the three match points that you saved at 4-5 in the third set in the singles. Can you just talk us through what was going through your head? How did you remain calm in those moments and what were you trying to do in each of those points? I know that it was a really uh, important, obviously, um, important game. Um, we, we changed not for so long for new balls. So I knew if I'm going to serve well that maybe I have some free points. But I had to stay in the present moment. It was love 40 and he missed a quite easy backhand, which, which gave me a little, little bit of confidence and belief. And then after I served twice, really good. And, um, and nothing, you know, after this kind of games, you, your, your energy level and then mental <coughs> level, it's, it's racing. And I think this helped me today. Yannick, over here. I'm not sure anyone else can maybe say they've beaten Novak Djokovic twice in, in one afternoon. What does that achievement mean to you? Yeah, it means a lot. Obviously, before the match, we, we were talking um, that it was a really important test today, you know, trying to understand what to, what to expect before the match. And then, then I think we, we made a good, uh, good tactical. Um, moment also before the match and, and obviously playing it is a little bit different but I think I have to be really proud about how I handle the situation um, and as I said it's, I'm just very happy for all of us for the team and, and tomorrow we have a great opportunity um, we know this but in the other way we, we will try to stay as, as relaxed as possible you know keeping the smile in, in in our in our head, which is important also, and then also to be happy to be here. No, it's uh, not so many. Um, for me, it's it's the first time that we can play a final in in, in, in Davis Cup, which is it means a lot for us. One last question in English. Um, Yannick, uh, just looking forward to the final and to the guys, please, as well, and the. Uh, the Australian team that you're facing, you'll be playing De Manor, presumably, in the second match. And um, you've got this extraordinary hold over him. Uh, I think they only take one set off you. How much of an advantage do you think that is for you? And what confidence does that give you? Well, we don't know who is going to play. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we, uh, we, we have to decide. We have to. We have to, you know, I. I have a lot of hours in my leg, uh, this I know. Um, if I play against him, it's, it's going to be different. You know, finals, as I said, it's always different. But let's see, it's, uh, it's his decision. Um, he's, he's, he's the captain of the team, and so he can, he can answer you that. <laughs> Thanks, Yannick. Thank you so much, man. Mm, no, obviously, it's our... Uh, point of power. He, 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 Yanni give us a lot of energy, give us a lot of confidence uh, in ourselves. Obviously, he's a great player, but he's not only a great player. So he, he's a great person. That's what I like. So, yeah, he, he's probably in the first position to play tomorrow. 
strong, different, uh, this, uh, yeah, different from uh, Serbians, maybe more, uh, maybe closer than um, than uh, Netherlands, as singles and doubles. But still, we have to take care of us, thinking about tomorrow, enjoying today, but focus for tomorrow. So head uh, head to tomorrow. We switch into Italian, but for the moment. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell so you don't miss out on all things tennis. of my life I don't know but it's um, for sure very very important um, you know as I say it's it helps a lot the last the last competition that is a team competition and because you get a lot of energy from your teammates from the whole team and then the crowd is different and I really enjoyed playing today it was uh, was a great match I started off really well and obviously in the second set he raised his level and the third set, I, I, I just tried to, to hold my service games and, and, and waiting for a, for a good opportunity which arrived on only 5 all, and I took it and obviously it was a very crucial uh, match um, for, for the whole team and at the end of the match I was really happy for, for the team to be at least able to, to play a deciding doubles and you know, we played really good and I think it was a really positive positive day today. Uh, Yannick, uh, I just want to ask you about the three match points that you saved at 4-5 in the third set in the singles. Can you just talk us through what was going through your head? How did you remain calm in those moments and what were you trying to do in each of those points? I know that it was a really uh, important, obviously, um, important game. Um, we, we changed not for so long for new balls, so I knew if I'm gonna serve well that maybe I have some free points. But I had to stay in the present moment. It was La 40, and he missed a quite easy backhand, which which gave me a little bit, little bit of confidence and belief. And then after I served twice, really good, and um, and nothing. You know, after this kind of games, you. you your, your energy level and then mental <coughs> level, it's, it's racing, and I think this helped me today. Yannick, over here. I'm not sure anyone else can maybe say they've beaten Novak Djokovic twice in, in one afternoon. What does that achievement mean to you? Yeah, it means a lot. Obviously, before the match, we, we were talking um, that it was a really important test today, you know, trying to understand what, what to expect before the match. and. And, and I think we we made a good uh, good tactical um, moment also before the match and, and obviously playing it is a little bit different but I think I have to be really proud about how I handled the situation um, and as I said it's, I'm just very happy for all of us for the team and, and tomorrow we have a great opportunity um, we know this, but in the other way, we, we will try to stay as, as relaxed as possible. You know, keeping the smile in, in in our in our head, which is important also, and then also to be happy to be here. No, it's uh, not so many. Um, for me, it's it's the first time that we can 
play a final in in, in, in Davis Cup, which is it means a lot for us. One last question in English. Um, Yannick, uh, just looking forward to the final. And to you, the guys, please, as well. And the, uh, the Australian team that you're facing in the final. You'll be playing De Manor, presumably, in the second match. And um, you've got this extraordinary hold over him. Uh, I think he's only going to take one set off you. How much of an advantage do you think that is for you? And what confidence does that give you? Well, we don't know who is going to play. Yeah, yeah. We, uh, we, we have to decide, we have to, we have to, you know, I have a lot of hours in my leg, uh, this I know. Um, if I play against him, it's, it's going to be different. You know, finals, as I said, it's always different, but let's see, it's, uh, it's his decision. Um, he is, he's, he's the captain of the team and so he can, he can answer you that. <laughs> Thanks, Yannick. Mm, no, obviously, it's our uh, point of power. He, 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 Yannick gives us a lot of energy, gives us a lot of confidence uh, in ourselves, obviously. He's a great player, but he's not only a great player, so he, he's a great person. That's what I like. So, yeah, <laughs> he's probably in the first position to play tomorrow. Strong, different. Uh, this, uh, yeah, different from uh, Serbians. Maybe more, uh, maybe closer than um, than uh, Netherlands as singles and doubles. But still, we have to take care of us. Thinking about tomorrow, enjoying today, but focus for tomorrow. So head uh, head to tomorrow. We switch into Italian but for the Monday. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell so you don't miss out on all things tennis. of my life I don't know but it's um, for sure very very important um, you know as I say it's it helps a lot the last the last competition that is a team competition and because you get a lot of energy from your teammates from the whole team and then the crowd is different and I really enjoyed playing today it was uh, was a great match I started off really well and obviously in the second set he raised his level and the third set, I, I, I just tried to, to hold my service games and, and, and waiting for a, for a good opportunity, which arrived on only 5 all, and I took it. And obviously, it was a very crucial uh, match um, for, for the whole team. And at the end of the match, I was really happy for, for the team to be at least able to, to play a deciding doubles. And you know, we played really good, and I think it was a really positive, positive day today. Yannick, uh, I just want to ask you about the three match points that you saved at 4-5 in the third set in the singles. Can you just talk us through what was going through your head? How did you remain calm in those moments and what were you trying to do in, in each of those points? I know that it was a really uh, important, obviously, um, important game. Um, we, we changed not for so long for new balls. 
so I knew if I'm gonna serve well that maybe I have some free points. But I had to stay in the present moment. It was La 40 and he missed a quite easy backhand, which, which gave me a little, a little bit of confidence and belief. And then after I served twice, really good. And, um, and nothing, you know, after this kind of games, you, you, your, your energy level and then mentally level, it's, it's racing. And I think this helped me today. Yeah, I'm not sure anyone else can maybe say that beat Novak Djokovic twice in, in one afternoon. What does that achievement mean to you? Yeah, it means a lot. Obviously, before the match, we, we were talking um, that it was a really important test today, you know, trying to understand what what to expect before the match. And then, then I think we, we made a good, uh, good tactical um, moment also before the match and, and obviously playing it is a little bit different but I think I have to be really proud about how I handle the situation um, and as I said it's, I'm just very happy for all of us for the team and, and tomorrow we have a great opportunity um, we know this but in the other way we, we will try to stay as, as relaxed as possible you know keeping the smile in, in in our in our head, which is important also, and then also to be happy to be here. No, it's uh, not so many. Um, for me, it's it's the first time that we can play a final in in, in, in Davis Cup, which is which, it means a lot for us. One last question in English. Yeah, uh, like, uh, just looking forward to the final and to you guys, please, as well, and the. Uh, the Australian team that you're facing, you'll be playing De Manor, presumably, in the second match. And um, you've got this extraordinary hold over him. Uh, I think they're going to take one set off you. How much of an advantage do you think that is for you? And what confidence does that give you? Well, we don't know who is going to play. Yeah, yeah. We, uh, we, we have to decide. We have to. We have to. You know, I. I have a lot of hours in my leg, uh, this I know. Um, if I play against him, it's, it's going to be different. You know, finals, as I said, it's always different. But let's see, it's, uh, it's his decision. Um, he's, he's, he's the captain of the team, and so he can, he can answer you that. <laughs> Thanks, Yannick. What's up, man? No, obviously, it's our... Uh, point of power. He, 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 Yanni give us a lot of energy, give us a lot of confidence uh, in ourselves. Obviously, he's a great player, but he's not only a great player. So he, he's a great person. That's what I like. So, yeah, he, he's probably in the first position to play tomorrow. Strong, different. Uh, this, uh, yeah, different from uh, Serbians. Maybe more, uh, maybe closer than um, than uh, Netherlands as singles and doubles. But still, we have to take care of us, thinking about tomorrow, enjoying today, but focus for tomorrow. So head uh, head to tomorrow. We switch into Italian for four the Monday Italian. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell so you don't miss out on all things tennis.
this afternoon, did you play the match of your life? And what did it feel like playing that match? A match of my life, I don't know, but it's um, for sure very, very important. Um, you know, as I say, it's, it helps a lot the last, the last competition that is a team competition and because you get a lot of energy from your teammates, from the whole team, and then the crowd is different. And I really enjoyed playing today. It was, uh, was a great match. I started off really well, and I was in the second set. He raised his level, and the third set, I, I, I just tried to, to hold my service games and, and, and waiting for a, for a good opportunity, which arrived on a 5 all and I took it, and obviously it was a very crucial uh, match um, for for the whole team and at the end of the match I was really happy for for the team to be at least able to to play a deciding doubles and you know we played really good and I think it was a really positive positive day today. Uh, Yannick, uh, I just want to ask you about the three match points that you saved at four five in the third set in the singles. Can you just talk us through what was going through your head? How did you remain calm in those moments? And what were you trying to do in each of those points? I know that it was a really uh, important, obviously, um, important game. Um, we, we changed not for so long for new balls. So I knew if I'm going to serve well that maybe I have some free points. But I had to stay in the present moment. It was love 40 and he missed a quite easy backhand, which, which gave me a little, little bit of confidence and belief. And then after I served twice, really good. And, um, and nothing, you know, after this kind of games, you, your, your energy level and then mental <coughs> level, it's, it's racing. And I think this helped me today. Yannick, over here. I'm not sure anyone else can maybe say they've beaten Novak Djokovic twice in, in one afternoon. What does that achievement mean to you? Yeah, it means a lot. Obviously, before the match, we, we were talking um, that it was a really important test today, you know, trying to understand what to, what to expect before the match. And then, then I think we, we made a good, uh, good tactical um, moment also before the match. And, and obviously, Playing it is a little bit different, but I think I have to be really proud about how I handled the situation. Um, and as I said, it's, I'm just very happy for all of us, for the team, and, and tomorrow we have a great opportunity. Um, we know this, but in the other way, we, we will try to stay as, as relaxed as possible, you know, keeping the smile in, 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 our, in our head, which is important also, and then also to be happy to be here, no? It's uh, not so many... Um, for me, it's, it's the first time that we can play a final in, 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 in Davis Cup, which is... It, it means a lot for us. One last question in English. Um, Yannick, uh, just looking forward to the final. And to the other guys, please, as well. And the, uh, the Australian team that you're facing in the final. You'll be playing De Manor presumably, in the second match. And um, he was an extraordinary hold over him. Uh, I think he's only attacked one set off you. How much of an advantage do you think that is for you? And what confidence does that give you? Well, we don't know who is going to play. Yeah, we, uh, we, we have to decide. We have to... We have to... You know, I have a lot of hours in my leg. Uh, this I know. Um, if I play against him, it's it's gonna be different. You know, finals, as I said, it's always different. But let's see. It's, uh, it's his decision. Um, he is he's, he's the captain of the team, and so he can he can answer you that. <laughs> Thanks, Yannick. <laughs> mm, no, obviously, it's our. Uh, point of power, he, 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 Yanni gives us a lot of energy, gives us a lot of confidence uh, in ourselves, obviously. He's a great player, but he's not only a great player, so he's a great person, that's what I like. So, yeah, he, he's probably in the first position to play tomorrow. 
strong, different. Uh, this uh, yeah, different from uh, Serbians. Maybe more, uh, maybe closer than um, than uh, Netherlands as singles and doubles. But still, we have to take care of us, thinking about tomorrow, enjoying today, but focus for tomorrow. So I had uh, had to tomorrow. We switch into Italian. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell so you don't miss out on all things tennis.